That's right, I'm back. Out of this crowd, you thought you'd see me twice? I bet not. Very quickly, Amy, Northwest Film Center, Brian, the Art Museum, thank you for tonight. This is amazing. I've, I've not seen a group like this in, a, in one place in a very long time. And uh, just putting my State of Oregon hat on for one minute, uh, Amanda, David, you should have won the Emmy just for the pool scene in season one of Shrill. I don't know why, but you should have. Rose Bond, thank you for making animation this town's massive, massive, wonderful thing in the rest of the world. Thank you for being part of that and pushing that out to the rest of the world. John and Todd, thank you for sharing your talent with this town, for making this town what it is, and for bringing it back here as much as you do. We so much appreciate it. Michelle and Raj, welcome to the party. Please come back. We love you guys. But I'm here to talk about Julie. And I first met Julie 20 years ago, I think it was, when we were both working in Tribeca for companies that we helped found, that we then since had a very bad breakup with, forming a somewhat of an industrial and sad PTSD bond between us. Many of us might say that that's somewhat of a rocky beginning, but I actually very beg to differ with that. At the time I first met her, I kind of knew nothing about documentaries. There were many in my life at that time that said I knew even less about producing anything in particular. But nevertheless, we found ourselves working on our first project together sometime around 2002, I think it was. We loved that project so much that we made it not once, but twice. Which means the first version of the movie we saw wasn't any good, so we decided to go back and make it again. And that was a really, really tough decision to make. And that was the first in a long line of lessons that I learned from Julie. Work hard, do your research, stay inspired, and don't be afraid of the tough decisions, especially if it's in the service of a better story. That film was filled with hard decisions, and at every moment that I winced, Julie stepped forward and, and thrived. I've always been in awe of that quality, and quite frankly, I'm a better person for being a small part of it, not to mention how much better those films are because of it. From that point forward, I kept, myself, kept finding myself in awe, not just the amount of work that Julie and her, and her team at Motto Pictures, have produced, and that team, as Amy mentioned, includes her equally talented husband and partner, Chris Clements. Thank you for being here tonight, Chris. But also the sheer quality of that work. The stories and people that she brought into our world and the places she took us. People we'd never meet and places we'd never would have seen. Filmmakers we would not have heard from and issues that we would not have known to care about if it wasn't for her talent, her per perseverance, and her sheer creative will to bring these films to life. Making those hard decisions, but always supporting the creative process, the filmmaker, and the film itself at every turn. And I can tell you from experience that this is a very unique quality in our business. A quality that has led her to, to I'm told, six Emmy Awards, multiple Oscar nominations, but not a win yet, and it's coming soon, I promise you. Uh, and becoming a member of the Academy's uh, Documentary Committee. In between Julie becoming a seminal producer and me working for the government of the state of Oregon, I was lucky enough to do two more projects with her, making our full count to three, to work alongside her on two more films that I feel are in a very small group of projects that I've worked on that I can actually stand to watch again. And if any of you know how many of the bad movies I've produced, that's a very small group. I've often said that success in this creative field is about two things, loving the projects you are working on and loving and respecting the people you are working with. All of these projects, all three of the projects that we have worked on together, I've been lucky enough to have both of those things come true through Julie, and she's the person that made it all happen. To me, being unbound is unlocking stories in a way that affects the way we view the world and the way we view our lives. And we see this again and again in the over 50 documentaries she's produced and the nearly 100 different projects you've been involved in over the time. These titles include things like Life Animated, Abacus, Small Enough to Jail, Sergio, Buck, One Child Nation, God Loves Uganda, The Devil's Playground, Ai Weiwei, Never Sorry, Gideon's Army, The Apollo, The Raft, The Final Year, Love Gilda, Southwest of Salem, the list goes on. And of course, the three most important titles in the Julie Goldman canon. The Emmy Award winning Manhunt, We Are the Giant, a story about the Arab Spring, and the incomparable Once in a Lifetime, a film so good, we made it twice. <laughs> a film no one saw, but, that everyone, but everyone should. A film that introduced me to the work, the talent, and the artistry of someone I now call a very dear friend and an unbound inspiration. Please welcome Julie Goldman.